as you can see on the video, we are going to discuss about object detection with YOLO V3. This is going to be a end-to-end -end tutorial for you guys who want to detect objects within the images with help of YOLO V3. So if you are new to my channel, don't forget to press the subscribe button because I am going to come up with multiple object detection videos in future where we will discuss about custom object detection with help of faster RCNN and TensorFlow platform. This video is all about YOLO V3 which is developed on Darknet. So without waiting, let's start. As like all my previous video, I'm going to start with very basics. So first of all, let's create a folder on our desktop named as YOLO object detection. We will save all our files models within this folder. This is our project directory. You will need to download some of the basic files from YOLO website. So you can do a simple Google search. I have also given link in the description for all these files. So guys, make sure you are following each and every step within this video. Otherwise, you may get some errors while coding. So once you reach to this darknet YOLO page, you will see there are lot of models like tiny YOLO, RFCN, SSD513, RetinaNet, YOLO V3. So you can download any of these configuration files and weight files from this website. So guys, make sure you are not downloading the file directly from the link because if you will try save link as it is going to save the HTML file, but you want the configuration and weight file. So follow the same step what I am doing here. First, click on the configuration file. You will reach to the GitHub page. You see it is yolo2.config. So you need to go to your working directory. You can utilize any text editor. I'm going to utilize Notepress++3. You have to copy every single line from this file. So just select everything, then press copy. Now go back to your text editor and paste everything over here. Then you need to save this complete file as in config file. So you can write yolo2.config. Make sure you are going to all types. Otherwise it will be saved as in text file or some other format. After saving the file, you will see the file within your directory named as yolo.config or whatever name you have given. But make sure you have .config file over there. Now for downloading the weights, you need to go back to your website, right click, then save link as. Make sure you are downloading the weight file. As you can see, you can just right click on the weights and go to save link as. I have already downloaded both the files. So I'm just going to copy and paste these two files within my folder. So you can see I have downloaded YOLO2 and YOLO3 files. So I'm utilizing specifically this YOLO V3 SSP model. I think I have given the name incorrectly, but the files are same. Now you have to go to your Anaconda PowerShell. So guys, you may be utilizing some other Python editors, but make sure you are opening the Python within this folder. So I'm going to utilize Anaconda PowerShell. Then I'm going to write CD, then the address of this folder. By this way, you will reach to the same folder. Now you can write Jupyter Notebook. So all our coding will be done on Jupyter Notebook. If you are utilizing some other text editor for Python, make sure you are writing the code in same way how I am writing it. Let's change the name of the file. We are going to write YOLO notebook and let's import some of the basic libraries like CV2, NumPy and Matplotlib. After importing these three libraries, we are going to 
load our weights from YOLO. Make sure all these libraries are pre-installed within your Python environment. You can type pip install opencv-python for installing cv2. Most probably you will already have numpy and matplotlib. I am going to load the model with help of net is equal to cv2.dnn then read net from darknet. This is the command which is utilized to load your YOLO weights and configuration files within cv2 platform. One more file that is coco.names. These models are trained with Coco dataset. You will have the labels of the Coco dataset. So you can do a simple Google search for Coco.names. You will reach to this GitHub repo. Now go down and you will see all the class labels. Just copy all these class labels, then open your text editor and save these file as in Coco.names as we did earlier while saving the config file. I already have that file. So I'm going to just copy and paste this file over here and I will show you how the file looks like. So guys, you can see this is the coco.names. You will have wine glass, cup, fork, knife, spoon, bowl, banana, apple. So all these classes, our model will be able to figure out from the images. You will see around 83 to 84 number of classes over here. All these things within your image, the model will be able to figure out. So these are the class names. So I'm going to create a list of classes and save all the class names within that list. We will write with open coco.names slash r as we are reading this text file and then we will append our class with these names within the file. Now just run this and you will see within our classes variable, all your class names are saved. Like you can see person, bicycles, car, motorbikes, aeroplane, all these things you will be able to identify within your image. Now we are going to download some of the images like dog, cat images, so that we will be able to identify. So I'm just doing a Google search and saving some of the images within my folder that we will experiment and try to detect the object within the image. Now, once you have downloaded all these images, let's read one of the image with help of CV2. So you can utilize cv2.imread to read the image. And here you need to provide the path of the image. Now let's utilize matplotlib to show this image within our notebook. So as you can see, this is the office image. So you may not see a very good color over here because matplotlib utilizes RGB channel while cv2 utilizes BZR format to read the image. If you are not familiar with RGB, BZR and how computers store the image, you can check out the other video within my channel. I have given link in the description. We need to define or save the height and width for your image. So you can write my image dot shape and it is going to return you width, height and RGB channel, which is three, which will be saved within these object. There comes the most important part. So you have the image in RGB format, which is having some shape of width cross height cross the channels, but your dark net or the YOLO net takes the image in different format. So you need to convert your image before feeding to the YOLO network. So you can do cv2.dnn.blob from image. Here you need to provide my image. Then you need to divide every single pixel with 255. So we have a color range of 0 to 255 and YOLO networks takes the range between 0 to 1. Ranging from 0 to 255 will now be changed 
to 0 to 1. Then you have a defined shape of 416 cross 416 and you do not want to crop it. So giving all those arguments. Now we can see the shape of the blob and if you see our image data set, your values are ranging from 0 to 255 while in the blob they are 0 to 1. And if you check the shape that is 1 cross 3 cross 416 cross 416. So this is the blobs we are going to feed to our YOLO network. So for feeding this blob to your network, you can write net dot set input and inside that you can give blob. So guys, if you have done any mistake with the code, you will get an error over here. Now you want to get the output from the network. So for getting the output, you need to define the last layer of that neural network. So you can get the last layer by utilizing net dot get unconnected out layer names. So this will give you the name of last layer. And if you want to get output from the last layer, you can just write last layer output. This is the variable I am defining is equal to net dot forward. And inside this, you need to provide the layer name that is last layer. So if you see the layer dot out, you will see a big matrix having 83 or 87 classes. Let me show by taking the zeroth element of this one. Still it is pretty high. Let's take another zero. Before taking that first check the shape and you will see it is 507 comma 85. This layer dot out, if you see the first element, you will have 87 values over here. So the first five element talks about the bounding box and after these five elements, you will have the number of classes and their probabilities. If you want to figure out the class, our focus should be after the fifth element. If we have anything, any value which is greater than zero, it means it is figuring out any element within your image. So we will define some of the basic variables like boxes, confidence and class IDs in the start. Now we will utilize a for loop to figure out the bounding boxes, the confidence and class IDs. So I'm going to write for output in layer dot out. Now for detection in output, we know that the probabilities of each class are coming after the fifth element. So we will write score is equal to detection if we have any element after the fifth one. If you want to figure out which element is this, you need to apply the numpy argmax method. So numpy argmax method returns you the highest value index from the array. So if you want to figure out that for which element it is saying it got the detection, you want to take the highest value of probabilities. So we will apply this numpy argmax for the class ID. And here you can write np.argmax. Then inside that you need to give the score. Then you want to figure out the confidence value because the class ID has given you the index. So you can write score within the class ID. It will return you the probability or the confidence for that prediction. So you may not like to have the lower confidences. So you can write if confidence is greater than 0.6 or 0.5, then only consider that object detection. So if the confidence is greater than 0.6, you can define the center by int then detection. Here we are multiplying the width and then for the center y, the detection one, then we are multiplying the height. This I am doing because the detection will be within the range 0 to 1 and I want to convert it back to the normal image size. That's why I am multiplying width and height over here. So you already got your center X and center Y and your width and height. Now you want to figure out the value in the X dimension and in the Y dimension. For that, you can just write X is equal to int center underscore X minus width by two. 
and same with the y center y minus height by 2. Now you already got all the values required. So let's append our boxes, our confidences and class IDs by boxes.append method. There you need to provide x, y and width and height. In the confidence, you are going to just append your confidence. Then you have class IDs. So just append it with the class ID. So we did some mistake over here. Just I realized you need to provide the curly brackets and I provided the square brackets. Now, if you want to figure out the bounding boxes out of these values, you can utilize cv2.dnn.nmsbox method. Here you need to provide all the boxes and the confidence threshold values for the confidence. So here I have given 0.5. You can give 0.6, which we have given in the upper part of the code. If you check the value saved within the indexes, you will find that it has saved 0, 7, 4, 4, 3, 2, 6, 5, 8. So this is array of array. So you may like to flatten this out to see all the boxes within one. Let me remove these toolbars so that we will have higher area to show you the code. Now, once you have defined your indexes, you need to give the font. So I'm taking up the font, then I'm going to save a color dictionary so that if I'm detecting two objects within one image, I should have different colors bounding box for all those images. I'm going to take some random color between 0 to 255 and here size will be the length of the box. So all your boxes will be in different colors or these colors will be selected randomly. Now, as you have defined the indexes, font and color, this is the time to draw these bounding boxes on top of your image. For drawing all these boxes, you have to loop on top of your indexes. So you have to write for i in indexes.flatten. You know that we got indexes as a list of list. So we need all these things in a single list. So just utilizing dot flatten command for that. Now you need to get the x, y, width and height for your boxes. So you can just take it from your boxes where we saved all our height, width and x and y coordinates. Now you need to create a rectangle or the bounding box. You can utilize cv2 dot rectangle method for doing that. So before that, let's provide the label for your image. So in the label, you want to give the class name. Remember the class IDs is going to return you the values ranging from zero to the number of classes. But if you want to get the name of the class, you have to take that coco.classes variable. And then inside that variable, you need to give the index. In that way, you will get the label for that. So guys, I will highly encourage you to check these codes line by line so that you will have good confidence about what is saved within these variables. Then you have to give the confidence. Confidence we can just take from our confidences. Confidence may have a large number within that. I want to round off that number to a two digit decimal places number so that it won't take huge space within the image. Then you need to give the color, just taking the color matrix and giving the color. We are going to define the rectangle. So for your rectangle, there are some basic argument. We have already figured all these arguments. So first of all, you need to give the image on top of which you want to create your rectangle. Then you have to give the initial coordinates that will be X and Y. Then the final coordinate, which will be X plus width, then Y plus height. Then you have to give the color, then the size. Now you want to put the text on top of your bounding box. So you can give the image, then label, then confidence you want to put as in text. Then you have to give the coordinates for this text, then the font size and color. So these are basic arguments. You can just check out these ones by putting tab command and change this. Now everything is done.
you have to just run the command and see if you are getting the bounding boxes on top of our image. So for that you can utilize cv2 dot am show method. You have to put a wait key otherwise you won't be able to close the window. Then at the last when you press the Q button from your laptop you want the window to close. That's why I am giving this destroy all windows command. We forgot to give the window name. I have just given it now and you can see our program is running. Let's check the background and you can see the image is coming but this image is pretty large in shape. It is not coming in one window. Maybe the resolution is pretty high. So we need to resize our image. So I am utilizing the cv2.resize command to resize our image so that we will be able to see it within our window. So my window resolution is 1280 cross 720 so I am giving that resolution ok I did some small typo you have to give my IMG now this is done let's show this image this is coming correctly now run the complete code and see if you are getting the bounding boxes ok we can see that these bounding boxes are coming but they are not coming correctly I think there is some problem with the code let's go back so we did a small mistake while saving the width and height for the image that's why these bounding boxes are not coming correctly. So let's correct that going to the top you can see we have saved width and height is equal to img dot shape. So let's change it back. So after correcting it and running it you can see we are getting all the detection correctly. The chair, person, monitor, everything is detected. Now let's run this on the doccat dataset and you can see we have this image. So let's run all the command and see if we are able to detect dog and cat. And you can see we are detecting perfectly the dog and cat photos. So this is quite good guys. Now you can just check out all shot of your images. If you guys have liked the video, don't forget to press the subscribe button. In the next video, we are going to train on our custom data. I am going to discuss all those methods in my upcoming lectures. This is going to be a good journey guys. So thanks for being with me till the end. Bye bye guys. Hope this complete exercise was helpful to you. I will meet you in my next video. Till then, bye bye and take care.